Some people think I eat burgers all day long, every day, which is sort of true, except I do like to cook other foods just like you. I'm gonna show you things you can do with ground beef that's not a burger. The holidays are fast approaching, so it's time to impress the family with this one. Beef pot pie. That's right. Step away from the freezer aisle, people. Put down that frozen pot pie you just picked up. Get home and make a real pot pie with real ingredients and high quality fresh ground beef. You've got this. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. Pot pie has an odd and very long history. Savory pies may go back as far as the ancient Egyptians. There is evidence, though I have not personally seen this, of drawings of pie in the tomb of Ramses II in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. Bakers to the pharaohs would include things like nuts and fruit in a primitive pastry that goes back as far as 1300 BC. Savory pies then traveled through ancient Greece, the Roman Empire, and eventually to the 16th century England where it became a mainstream dish. To this day, the Brits still take their savory pies very seriously. They eat them hot, they eat them cold. Don't mess with a Brit and a pot pie. Traditionally, a beef pot pie is made with cubes of stew beef, but my recipe uses fresh ground beef. It's a lot easier. You'll also find the usual suspects in pot pie, like tiny cube potatoes and carrots, sliced mushrooms, diced sweet onion, butter, frozen peas, sherry, white wine, beef stock, Worcestershire, heavy cream, dry thyme, garlic powder, and flour. Oh, and of course, high quality fresh ground beef from Schweiden Sons. For the crust, I only use my favorite flaky butter crust recipe from my friend Paula Haney at Hoosier Mamba Pie Company in Chicago. Mmm. You can go to the store and buy a pre-made crust, but it'll never be as good as making your very own crust at home. Do it! First, let's saute the ground beef. You want to chop and cook the beef in a pan and then drain the fat and set it aside. Next, saute the onion and the butter. When the onions just begin to brown, add the mushrooms and cook for five more minutes. Add the sherry. And add the wine. Cook just enough to make sure the alcohol burns off. Now add the spices the cooked carrots and potatoes, reintroduce the beef to the pan, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, add the flour to the pan and coat the contents with the flour. Next, add the beef stock, but do it slowly while stirring. Reduce the heat, add the peas, and stir in the cream. Once everything's mixed up in the pan, Turn off the heat, it's time to roll out some dough. You're gonna need two pieces of dough, one for the top and one for the bottom. Okay, sure, I know going to the store and buying a pre-made crust is probably easier, but man, it's never gonna taste like this. See, look how easy that was. So easy. Now we need to fill the pie plates and get it ready for the oven. Okay, this is slightly cooled. You're gonna think to yourself, that's a lot of filling for that little pie. You're gonna find a way to fit it all in there. You'll see. Before you put the top crust on, you're gonna to wanna to make the edge of the pie moist. Put that right on the edge. The most fun part. Putting the lid on this thing. Top crust, here it comes. Using a fork, gently pinch along the edge so that the top and bottom stick together. Take a knife, cut off the excess. Look at that. Yeah, even I'm impressed. That's pretty cool, actually. Very important last step. I'm gonna cut a few slits in here for air holes so it doesn't explode. Into the preheated oven, 400 degrees for 30 minutes. It's ready. How do you know it's ready? Because the liquid is bubbling out of the top. That's how you know it's done. 
you really should let it cool down because as you know, it's piping hot and I could burn myself. What? Savory pot pie made with fresh ground beef. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Oh wow, that is exactly what it should taste like. Get the recipe on twidensons.com or on my website, georgemoats.com. Mmm. Happy holidays. <laughs>